Right guys, so today we will be looking at what the best possible team is for Kanto. Now, to measure this, I have looked at every major battle in the original red and blue games to determine what the six best Pokemon would be to beat them. The battles I looked at are the eight gyms, the Elite Four, plus the Champion. So, to do this, I made a list of how many times a type would have an advantage or disadvantage in one of these fights. Two times super effective and four times super effective carry different weights in the calculations, and the same can be said for anything that's heart resistant and three quarters resistant, and immunities are also considered in this too. So, when looking at this, there were six types that stood out as being the most effective, and they were water, ice, grass, psychic, rock, and ground. So, with that, let's put the first two together, water and ice. Now, there are a few Pokemon that can fit here, and the most obvious two would be Dugong and Lapras. Lapras is the better of these two, so we'll focus on this for now. Many people would consider Lapras to be the best Pokemon of Gen 1, or at least one of the best. And stats-wise, they are right. But the issue we have is the dual typing of water and ice actually causes it to have more issues than a pure water Pokemon would. You see, a water Pokemon would be good in 9 fights and only bad in 4, with ice being good in 6 and bad in 4. However, a Lapras, being a water ice type, would be good in 8 and bad in 7. And as you can see, it's closed that gap to just a plus 1 positive. So, because of this, the best option is actually a pure water type, and we're going to go with Vaporeon. Now, Vaporeon is the 18th strongest Pokemon in the game, stats-wise, anyway, and that makes it also the best pure water type, so this is a great Pokemon to start with. So, with water done, let's actually take a look at Ice. Now, as I said earlier, Lapras would be a good choice if it didn't have the dual typing with water, so instead we need to find a different Ice Pokemon. Dugong's out, as that also has a dual type with water, so instead we're going to go with Jinx. Jinx is actually a dual type with Psychic, so it's a nice Psychic Pokemon, and that is obviously two of the types we've picked out. We already know that Ice is good in 6 and bad in 4, but Psychic is similar, being good in 6 but actually only weak in 3. The dual typing makes Jinx good for 9 fights and bad for 7. A pure Ice type would be better, but one of them doesn't exist in this game, so we are actually going to have to go for Jinx. But since we've mentioned it, let's have a look at Psychic Pokemon. The obvious choice here would be Mewtwo. Not only is it the strongest Pokemon in the game, even over 20 years later, it's still probably the strongest Pokemon in Pokemon. However, you can't actually catch it until you've beaten the game, so it wouldn't really be fair to include it in this list of Pokemon you could use to beat the game with. So, the next best Psychic Pokemon is Hypno. Many people actually prefer Alakazam just because they just like the design, they think it's cool or whatever, but Hypno is, a is basically exactly the same, but with better stats, so it's hard to argue against Hypno here. So, let's move on to Grass. Most people here would be expecting an Executor, a Victory Bell, or a Venusaur to be listed. Well, it's none of them. Due to Executor's typing, it's actually weak in 9 fights, whereas Venusaur and Victory Bell would be weak in only 5, but also only good in 7. So we actually need a pure Grass-type Pokemon, and the best one of them is Tangler. Now this might come as a surprise to most of you, because it certainly did to me. I did not expect Tangler to make this list. I actually expected it to be Venusaur. But yeah, Tangler is in the best team for Kanto. Stats-wise, it's actually only 30 overall stats worse than Venusaur, and it has better coverage than Venusaur does, making it good in 10 fights, which is actually kind of mad. I, I did not expect that at all. But let's not mess around. There is two more to go, Ground and Rock, and we can actually combine these two together. This is one of the rare times where a dual typing is actually helpful. You see, Rock types are good in only 6 fights, yet only bad in 4, so it is actually usable in most cases just being kind of a run-of-the-mill type. Whereas Ground is good in 8 and bad in 5, so again, kind of run-of-the-mill type. But out of them 5 it's bad in, 3 of them it would be completely useless because the Pokemon are just immune to it, so it, it wouldn't help at all. However, the dual type with Rock covers this immunity, meaning that Rhydon would be good in 11 fights and only bad in 6, which is the biggest gap we're going to have this entire episode. That is mad. So Rhydon definitely gets a place into this team just for that. Because of the grouping up of the last two types, this has freed up an additional slot. Now, I wasn't too sure what to use, with the rest of the typings all being pretty evenly matched. The one that did stand out was Ghost Type, being good in six fights and only bad in one, and that's bad because of an immunity. So looking at it, that clearly would be the best option, but then you have to consider that there are only three Ghost Pokemon in this game, Ghastly Haunter and Gengar. And you can't get Gengar unless you trade to evolve a Haunter, so for a lot of people, it's going to be obtainable, and Haunter definitely isn't a better option than other Pokemon for different types. But, if you can manage to get a Gengar, then it is absolutely making its way into the best team for Kanto. So, to wrap this up, the most effective team for Kanto would be Vaporeon, Jinx, Hypno, Tangler, Rhydon, and Gengar. 
I do hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment below and let me know what you think. I am thinking about doing this for every generation, so it would be nice to know if anyone wants that. And remember to subscribe, and I will catch you all next time.